Today we're going to talk about three tips for getting your board on board for your annual appeal. And I have a very good friend, uh, Randy Hawthorne from Nonprofit Hub. He's going to be talking about these three different ideas, which are actually amazing. Thank you so much for coming today, Randy. Thank you for having me, John. Uh, for those of you that are unaware of Nonprofit Hub, uh, welcome. I, I would love for you to to join, join us at nonprofithub.org. And when you do uh, visit us for the first time, yes, we have an annoying pop-up, but behind that annoying pop-up is, is, is your opportunity to receive our weekly email called the Hubcab. Uh, and that gives you five different articles that we find that will help your nonprofit now. We also do a printed magazine. It's designed to be a quick read, wow. not one that gets thrown in the read later pile. Uh, and we usually focus uh, our attention on one area. This month's issue is actually on fundraising. Hmm. If you're interested in that, just email info at nonprofithub.org. Give us your physical address, and we will send that out to you. It, just, it was just published just recently. So oh, Great, Randy. So why don't we start? Yep, let's just getting... jump right in. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. And I and I just I'm uh, nonprofit hub is located in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's our state capital. I just um, on the side whenever I need to clear my brain, I do some phot photography. So today I just decided that I would use that in our in our talk. Uh, and uh, so these are just some sites around Lincoln uh, as we go through these today. But uh, this first slide is talking about uh, your board and giving them a a, a purpose uh, for uh, wanting to help with fundraising. Uh, if your board isn't fundraising yet, uh, it should be a part of your board's responsibility and you should definitely set that expectation as you bring new board members on that that is part of what they are. It's their fiscal responsibility uh, to, to help uh, with the health of the organization. So it, I, would, I would highly recommend that, that you make that part of the expectation. But let, them, let the board members know the role in the process of fundraising as how as well as how the fundraising fits within the mission you know I sat on a board once uh, for a whole year where there was a line item that said board fundraising and I kept saying what is that <laughs> and wasn't given any direction on what that meant no uh, mention. and need no mention <laughs> wow. and so needless to say that money was never raised that line item at the end of the year still said zero at it uh, so uh, you, we, we can't do that. That's just <laughs> ridiculous. Needless to say, I also, uh, once my term was over, uh, I, 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 I w was not able to continue to serve on a board that would do that. But you need to set some goals and give them direction on how they can do that uh, and how they can help raise that money. But you also have to give them the passion to do that. So you gotta, you, you've got to collect those stories. Um, John actually has a great article that accompanied yesterday's email about this, about good storytelling. And you know, I just read uh, recently, it might have been that article, John, <laughs> that you need to get deep with the stories and get out of that quote unquote impact change business speak about what we're doing. You need to give a, a great story, a real story, being honest so that they can share that with them. So, yeah. um, and, so and then re remind the board that it's not always about the ask. You know, it's about a conversation. A good friend, uh, Simone Joyeau, uh has a lot of great board training content around this that you should check out, uh, either at Nonprofit Hub or on her site. Uh, she also mentions that, you know, asking for a gift is not a presentation, it's a conversation. Uh, and I really, uh, really appreciate that. She is, she knows a lot about uh, board work. Have you worked with her, John? I have not. Um, I know Tom. I've done a little bit of work with Tom, but I don't know. I don't know her. No. Yeah, she she does a lot of great um, board development uh, training for sure. So that's kind of the give a purpose tip. Uh, kind of, I, I kind of probably gave more than one tip in that part, but. <laughs> yeah. you know, the key behind this, I think, what I'm hearing is um, you have to have that person-to-person -person dialogue. You know, you have to, I would, 
I would imagine the best way to do this is to have a discussion, a frank, open discussion on a regular basis with the board members about the mission and the purpose of the of the board and their and their yep. individual mission. I, I would agree with that. It should be something that you talk about at every board meeting for sure. Excellent. All right. So yeah. do we want to go to the next one? Yeah, we'll, t we'll talk a little bit about training the board and not only doing that, having that regular discussion uh, on, a, uh, on a regular basis, especially now, you know, we're, we're getting toward the end of the year. Uh, and if you haven't started on your year end ask, there's still time, uh, but it's getting scary. <laughs> um, so you need to, you know, you need to conduct a focused training outside of a board meeting as well. Uh, especially if you're having them do face-to-face -face encounters, which we know are probably one of the best ways, the most, uh, the most effective ways to uh, make, uh, make it a, an ask. Um, so if they have a few key contacts, uh, that you, would, you would still have time to maybe make that happen. Uh, and during that training, you, you probably have a list of prospects as well. Uh, let them choose from that list and allow them to add. Just make sure you keep track of who's talking to, to who and all of that. And know that this isn't always about a board. Uh, I, I sat on a board once where uh, we invited other impassioned volunteers to this particular training so that we had even more than just the, you know, the 15 or so people that were on the board that were willing to go out and, and make asks. Um, and remind them, it's, it's their job, and, and remind yourself, it's their job as a board member or a volunteer to get the answer. Uh, it's not always about making the ask. Of course they're going to ask, but we need the answer, and maybe the answer is not now, but uh, maybe next year or whatever the case may be. We want to know what that answer is going to be so that, that you can plan uh, in the future as well. Um, and uh, just know that not everyone on your board was probably recruited to do the ask. So have them work on other parts of the process, maybe helping with the list of identifying donors or uh, stewarding donors to create donor loyalty so they're not you know they're just helping with that so uh, so I say I would say tip number two is give them the tools and give them the training to to be able to go out and help you with fundraising that's great next and so number three is all about getting uh oh personal Get personal. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You gave them the bonus. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> and and Ooh, I, love I think picture. we've all I've you took the picture? <laughs> I think we've all experienced this. You know, the any time that I get a personal note at the bottom of an ask from a friend of mine who happens to be sitting on the board, I always give pause. It gives me a little bit of a guilt that yes, I probably should help my friend out and help the organization out because they care about it. Um, and, uh, and, and that's a great board task. As a matter of fact, I'm a nonprofit. Uh, nonprofit Hub is a nonprofit. We're getting, uh, our year-end ask is uh, just finished printing. Uh, the whole team is gonna go over uh, at, to the print company and start, <laughs> start writing our, our notes to the, to the friends that we know. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the personalized thank you notes. I, I think a lot of executive directors think that it it has to come from them, and that's not true. Uh, studies have shown, and I wish I would have written this down, John, but studies have shown that just a personal thank you note, a handwritten note uh, from anyone from the organization is just as effective. Uh, right. So get those volunteers, maybe those non-askers to help with those sorts of things. Hmm. So yeah, I think uh, I read somewhere. That, yeah. I, no, I was just going to say, I, I think I read a study somewhere that did kind of correlate um, a follow-up, like a thank you, or a handwritten thank you note to uh, re affecting or impacting retention. Yes, definitely. So you'll definitely want to, to work with that. And then my bonus tip, John, that you were jumping ahead to uh, was um, if, if you're still working on your year-end right now for this year, I'm going to give you till Martin Luther King Day, but by then you better be thinking about how you're going to do your end for 2016. <laughs> yeah. So you don't kind wait of have to get a head start. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, you Certainly. really have to give. Um, 
Because a lot of these, if we go back and review them just to, just very quickly, giving a purpose, it's not like, oh, okay, great. Uh, I can do that tomorrow. Let's see, tomorrow's the 19th. I'll give them a purpose. And then on Monday, um, I can uh, get them ready. That's fine, you know. So a, a lot of these take actually months, like giving them a purpose, like really teasing that out and getting that that unified commitment and then training them. Of course, that's going to – that might take some while. But, but, but I think that um, – you know, one thing I was thinking about, Randy, as as you went through a lot of this was that a lot of organizations and I, I just don't know personally, um, but I the sense I get is uh, from the few the little work that I've done, you know, connected with boards is that there isn't really a, a real personal connection with um, board members and the organization. Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, it's a lot of it seems to be business like the board meetings that I've been to and I've been on a couple boards. Um, it, they tend to be very administrative and I think that's a challenge, you know, um, <clears throat> but for, yeah, I would, I would agree. If you have a, if you have a business type of board, uh, you need to find ways, uh, to engage them in your mission uh, a little bit more. Uh, and I've, and I've, I too have sat on a couple of boards like that, John, where I just, um, was, was they, I think they tried. Yeah. But you know, I I still by the end of my first year of the of the term, I was going, oh, I I don't understand exactly what 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 my role is on this board, mm -hmm. let alone what all of the things that you're trying to do. It, <laughs> I thought I knew going in, and then it got just more complicated when I, when I got on the board. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. I wonder, um, I wonder if that would be the responsibility of the board chair or some, maybe even a subcommittee. Like, let's let's humanize the the board. Let's let's bring more tears and more stories and more laughter into these meetings. Yeah, I think that's that's an interesting concept. Is you know considering a a, a committee for um, just engaging the board um, and. You know, there's there's typically uh, there's typically a couple of people that are really impassioned by the by the mission um, that could potentially be the be the uh, liaison between the staff and the and the the board to really conscientiously think about um, conscientiously think about making sure the board is engaged in that mission. I, I like that idea. I might yeah, steal that, John. Oh, you can steal it. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I Tomorrow mean, I... well, that, but that's really about people, right? Finding a very pragmatic way to keep people um, grounded in, in things that are real, you know? Um, yeah. And I think that that is the power, you know, when, when often I talk about storytelling, it's often in a marketing context, but the power of storytelling could be used to revive a board. Uh, for example, at every meeting at the beginning, um, we have, you have to share a story like, or, or a story could be, um, shared like an impact story or, or a family or, you know, some details and maybe even following a family, uh, say if it's a habitat for humanity, they could actually kind of talk about, um, a family throughout a, a few months, I would imagine. Yeah. You know, just to kind of glue you know, those things together. I, th I think a lot of time like that one board that I was talking about where I, I felt a little bit lost, they did try to share a story every month. I think it might be interesting uh, to maybe assign board members to go find a story uh, and share that uh, and what they and what they discovered because I think that would also potentially help your 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 fundraiser or your executive director to um, to then craft that story uh, for donors. Um, I, that, that might be an interesting angle for that. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other thought I had um, when you were talking about getting them ready, giving them the tools, um, sometimes uh, what I've done with my, uh, what I've recommended to my clients, and some of them actually have done this and it, and it tends to work, is that what they'll do is they'll go through their LinkedIn network. So the board members, um, this, um, uh, the nonprofit marketing professional, whoever it is, they're going to connect themselves with that uh, board member, make sure they're connected on LinkedIn, and then they're able to see through their network and see if there's anybody 
on their, um, you know, in their profile or in their database that they're trying to target, or maybe even if there's an influencer, if they're doing, they're trying to get the word out, if they're looking for partners or sponsors, they can really use that network and have um, obviously a kind of a, a meeting with that board member and go through that person's network and find out strategically what what's a good opportunity, depending upon the situation. But I think the board member's network is really critical. But you kind of have to sit down next. I think right. you have to kind and of sit down with them, you know, and go and have a meeting like that. I, I, I would agree. Uh, I think one of the more effective uh, boards that I sat on uh, did kind of pin me down and say, can you, can you take an hour and let's just talk about your network and people that I can contact from your network. Uh, and, you know, that was so much more effective than just kind of at a board meeting and say, look at your, look at your network and give me some names. You know, the, the, the uh, fund development officer actually came over to my office and uh, we, we did do just what you said, go through the, <laughs> go through my LinkedIn and see who would be willing to, see who would be willing to, uh, that I would be willing to make an introduction to for that organization. So. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. Um, so, Randy, thank you so much. Again, any final words of wisdom? Thank you, uh, actually, for having me, John. It, it was uh, great to be online and have coffee with you this morning. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I know that we have a lot of other great tips about how to govern your board out at Nonprofit Hub, so go check it out. Thank you so much, Randy, and look for the recording through next week's newsletter, and you can also log in uh, to this URL and then uh, have access to all the past recordings as well. And that is it. Thank you again so much, Randy, and thank you everybody who took part in today's discussion.